yes, it's a Finnish football show. And breathlessly, we're, we're recording this just 15 minutes or so after the end of the Finland game away at Kazakhstan, which ended Kazakhstan nil, Finland 2. Um, I'm joined by Mark H. Hi, Mark. Hello. Just run down the tunnel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the uh, uh, the other two are not with us right now for various other reasons. Uh, work and uh, gallivanting being the main the main cause of Rich and Keke not being here. So we thought we'd just crack on and uh, and have a little talk through what we've just seen. And I think we we should probably do it in the context of we weren't feeling very positive on on Saturday after the uh, after the Ukraine game. Um, so we went into this today thinking, oh, we better get something out of it. And I think it was uh, a lot better than that, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, actually we got, so we got, you know, I think we were all pretty deflated straight after the match. And I think first straight out of the gate, Ruve made a, a five changes uh, and made a massive formational change that was, I think, closer to this to, to a sort of 4-3-3, sort of like a 4-3-1-2. Um, mainly, but yeah, I mean, he was really positive out of the gate and then I suppose the opening part of the game was a little bit um, niggly, but after we got through that piece, you know, I think for the whole the whole game, I thought we dominated quite well against a team that were clearly inferior to us, which was nice to see. Yeah, it was. I I, I made loads of notes during this game. The rest of the family were laughing at me or or shouting to me to, "Hey, you better write that down and write that down." And sometimes <laughs> my fingers couldn't move fast enough. Um, but the first sort of 20 minutes or so, there was plenty of possession and passing from Finland, but no real chances. And, and it was all a bit, it wasn't really very sharp. It was all a bit scrappy. And I guess that, that fits in with your your niggly comment. And then it was actually Kazakhstan that had the first couple of chances after 20 minutes. And you're thinking, oh no, is it going to be one of these games where you you have, you control it, but somehow manage to, to throw it away? But um, that was kind of the the turning point, I I suppose. A um, couple of half chances for Kazakhstan, and then they and then a few minutes later they had a a, a shot from outside the box, and then that was just before uh, Joel Pochimpalo got injured, which it, it didn't look very nice, did it? It was completely accidental. It was a clash of heads, but it, it didn't look pretty. I, I, it looked like he busted his nose. So he, I think he went like, they both went up for the ball and he jumped higher. And as the ball came down, he went to plant it. I think he connected with the ball, but then put his nose straight into the back, nose and sort of uh, upper lip straight into mm. the back of the defender's head. And then just, you know, sort of, uh, you know, fell backwards. You know. It was the way, it was the way that as he landed, his, his head sort of whipped back as well. It looked really um, uncomfortable. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, it's that way when you get properly clocked. That I think you know it wasn't like um, it wasn't a controlled fall. As no. It, as it? Yeah. no, it wasn't. He, he was off for about five minutes, and he came back on with a with you know cotton wool up his nose and and tried to play on. But but it was a few minutes later that that Frederick Jensen came on, and that was on about thirty two minutes. And and then it seemed from there for the rest of the half in, through injury time, almost almost twenty minutes that the that the Finnish pressure started to started to build and and the quality of the football was quite good. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think they just, they had a bit of, I think one of the things that the break did was it allowed, it allowed Rive and a couple of the coaches to start like shouting at people <laughs> and the passing got a lot tighter and I think the movement got a lot quicker. And I think what, I mean, what Kazakhstan started to do, one of the reasons it was quite frustrating was that they'd worked out that we were playing a bit of a narrower formation and they were trying to press us because they had sort of five, they put five like uh, across across the middle, um, but as soon as as soon as we had that break and a, and a couple of people got a rollicking, passes just got quicker and sharper. Uh, the movement got a bit cleaner, and then all of a sudden we could just move them around. And I think yeah, I think I, I think the first chance was was it Granland? Uh, Granland had a chance, or was it Lud? I think there was a, there was two or three in quick succession in around that. It that was time. it was Granland actually, yeah, on about 37, 37 minutes. It was that pass from Kamara sort of through the eye of a needle. Um, Lod drove forward and then pulled it back from the byline for, for Granland and uh, he just uh, just shot wide. 
scuffed it. Yeah, you yeah. Just, you just, you just cut, cut cut the neck off it and, and put it wide. And you think, I mean, the keepers sort of react into the cutback, and you can see the goals just gaping. You know, just but, slide. but he was under pressure. There were a couple of defenders sort of sliding in there at the at the same time. <laughs> he, he he was, but it was a it was one of those chances. I think you'd you'd like you should score it. It's it's nailed on. He got closer a few minutes later with his next opportunity. Well, then I was because I, I was tweeting. That I, okay. <laughs> I, I, put out a tweet, I put out a tweet. I said, "Oh, you've got to come on, Alvin. You've got to put that away." And then basically, as I pressed send, he rifled a volley <laughs> straight off the bar, and I thought, "Oh, best best give him some kudos now." Best yeah, there there was a, a deep cross from Hammerlinen on the left, and it and it came to. Uh, to Grandland, actually, the defender sort of flicked it, and uh, and it didn't go very far. Went to Grandland, and he hit this sort of swerving, dipping drive from well inside the box, but it just smashed off off the bar. It was uh, it was a sign of of the way things were going, though, and it started. I think the momentum really started to uh, to build up from there. I, I made a I made a note also that that Glenn Kamara is involved in everything. And it was quite interesting because he, I think Schuller was playing that deep role. And instead of having two of them there, there was just one playing deep. And it allowed Nisila and Kamara to really get forward. And Kamara was quite often wide on the left. It was it was unusual to see him out there. Um, yeah, I mean, at the first half, it was quite difficult. He popped up all over the place, mm. wide on the right, wide on the left, sort of in behind. I think that that the the him, him Lud and um, Nisila made a very difficult, like uh, difficult trio for the for the uh, for the Kazakhs to deal with, and I think also, I mean, you could really see how much we missed Schuler. Like, I mean, really, like just the amount of ground that he covered, the amount of the amount of times he would open himself up for the for the out ball, uh, the quality of the, the passing that he's got. I thought he was, I mean, he was really good. I mean, obviously Kazakhstan are not, you know, they're not Ukraine, uh, but I thought he was really good today, and I think he really showed, you know, exactly what he brings to the team, connecting the players and letting. Kamara and Nisila and Lord just run free. An interesting, interesting maybe blueprint for playing against weaker teams in the future. Actually, it'd be, it'd be nice to see that that sort of. I mean, it's, I think it's not just it's not just weaker teams. It's any team. Like if you think about Ukraine, you know, one of the things that we couldn't work out how to do was sort of break through them like their middle. And so we'd spread ourselves really, really, really wide to match up the the Ukrainian sort of uh, block. And you think, well, if if that's not working, you want to try something that's a bit more centralized with a bit more accurate, you know, passing in between. And I think we just we didn't have that option last on Saturday. You know, what I mean, we never really had the, the the chance to to bring in somebody like Schuller to connect the play to release somebody like Kamara Lud and Nisila. Um, and you think uh, it's not just against weaker teams. I think it's a good option against anybody that wants to just try and block you like, and, and see out a game. It's not the first time that we've said this this year, but Schuller's really growing into his position in that team, isn't he? Especially, I think a year ago, there were, we, we, we as a group were making comments that, you know, is he up, is he up to it? Is he going to be good enough? And as we've started to see one or two of the other kind of regular central midfielders appear less and less like Spav and um, uh, Kauko um, and Schuller's come in more and more and I feel like he's really growing into it and like you said we we saw tonight how much we missed him the other day. Yeah I mean and I think I mean Keke's always banging on about how good how good he's playing in Sweden uh, and, and like how much the Al Svenskan's doing him doing him good and I think you can see it in, in his play. He's just I think he's, he's, he's I mean I think he's he was probably underrated. He was probably always underrated because he's always that kind of he's always been that kind of tidy player. But I do think, in addition to being a relatively underrated player, he has definitely got better. Mm. I think just he wants the ball. I think that's the biggest difference that I can see in him is that he wants the ball like all the time from the defenders, and that's I mean that's massively important if you've got a team that's trying to press against you. And then on, well, there was there was a, there was a chance for Lud. Where Jensen sort of dinked the ball over the defender, and uh, and Lod came on, and and it was blocked, and then mm. a minute later came that came that breakthrough, um, and Lod was involved again. He was he seemed to be involved in everything around that the penalty penalty area, but he he loved the ball over the defender. Puki, the ball came to Puki, and he sort of turned and then poked it home past the keeper, and it was a, a landmark goal as well. 
outside of the boot, classic, classic Temu finish, like really, really nice and easy, just on the turn, off the shoulder of the defender, on the through ball, slotted into the bottom corner. 32nd of his uh, of his international career, so it was the goal that put him level with uh, with Lipti, with the king. Um, yeah, and it was, I mean, it was, I mean, it had been coming, been coming for a, for a long old while, and um, he took it really well, and I think it was, uh, um, yeah, just well-deserved. And that was in the 44th minute, and he still managed to have two more chances <laughs> before half-time. There was there was one where he he pulled it wide at the goal, and then on the 45th plus three minutes, he scored, mm. but then he didn't. He was offside, and it was close. It was a close offside. Um, you know what? This is a, It's a really weird one, that one, because, you know, the, the VAR check got done after the offside had been called. You know what I mean? And you never, we never got to see the details. So we, I think we all got like about one replay that yes. looked like, that looked massively inconclusive. And I think the new ruling for VAR is if the referee, it can only be overturned if the ref, referees made a clear and obvious error, which means if he was onside, but it was really close and you could understand it being called offside, then VAR is not going to check it as a, as a goal. And I think the strange thing is that like that VAR check happened sort of about it was complete about a minute after the play had resumed and you think well they're never going to pull it back like yeah now. that's that's true that's interesting yeah so it's not like so i think i mean i actually think that and i mean it would have been a better one because i liked that it was, a, it was a nice it was a lovely run lovely through ball um you know i think his first shot the keeper kind of got something on but then he just finished it up with the second um but i did I, when i looked at when i saw the replay my initial reaction was that he was on side but it was level because you're supposed to, it's, if it's level or levelish, then you're supposed to give the advantage to the to the striker. And that was basically um, basically the last action before half time. So the teams went in one nil to to Finland, and then the second half kind of carried on where the first half had just about just finished, and the, the really the first action of note was on the forty seventh minute, and it was Puki's second goal. It was yeah. a long curling shot from Urnissila. Um, it was saved by the keeper, so it was from the left-hand side of the box, a long curling shot, and the keeper made a save, but he kind of just patted it down at the feet of Pulki. I mean, he could have he, he could have caught it. He certainly could have pushed it away out of danger, but he just dropped it for, for Deme to, to poke it home, and that's the record-breaker. It was a curling shot, whipping, curling, dipping shot, sort of. Uh, I mean, it was a nice shot from Nisila. Like it was, mm. I think it was it was sort of within his range. But uh, you, you're right. I think the keepers got to usually do better than that. I think out of all the 33, <laughs> 30, 32, 33 goals that he's scored for Finland, that was probably the easiest. I think <laughs> like if if if, uh, if Yari was sitting at home hoping that he could retain the record, he'd have probably been going, "What? You've got to be kidding me! You can't just gift it to him." <laughs> but, uh, no, but but. Uh, Hey, what are you gonna do when when the keeper drops it there and thereabouts? Then you've got to, you know, you just took you just tucked it away. And I think it was quite nice. I think it was quite nice because the keeper sort of picked himself up and was just desperately looking at the linesman and waving his, oh, "Can you see me?" And the linesman's like, "Nah, not <laughs> again, <laughs> not this time." Yeah, no. yeah you, you you don't you don't get goals cancelled out because you screwed it up, keeper. That's part of the game. <laughs> um, there were some really nice regular patches of one and two touch play from Finland. It was a bit, it was different. I, I'm, I've got used to seeing this happening in quite close quarters sort of down, especially down the left wing. I don't know. I always seem to notice it down there in the last couple of years, but today there seemed to be a bit more space and there was some, some nice one and two touch football being played regularly through throughout the game, which was nice to see. And as I'm, as I'm looking through my notes, um, I think the names that keep popping up are obviously Pukki because he's going for his hat trick and probably upset his teammates once or twice by being just a little bit greedier than he than he perhaps could have been. Um, but Lud, Nissila, Jensen, they were all involved all the time, as well as Kamara. But but those were the ones that were really at the at the forefront of, uh, of all the action did, did anyone else oh and and to be that that's there's no more i think specific highlights to to mention i've just got a list of sort of chances that were missed or saved but 
was there anything else, anyone else that kind of caught your eye during the game? I, I like to see Alvin Grandland back. You know, I thought he was, I thought he was, I thought he was pretty nice. Um, and I, 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 Nico Hamalainen was was a bit frustrating. I thought, I thought, I think you're right. Like we do often quite build a lot, build a lot down the left, um, either with right a lot or with uh, Uronen normally. It's normally Uronen who starts to kind of build and work the play. And I, I think he tried a fair amount, Nico, this time, but it didn't. It wasn't just just wasn't sort of coming off. And they quite often got themselves into a sort of corridor down that left hand flank where they would like smashing col- crosses into the first man or or just kind of shanking them a little bit too far. So uh, I, I, it would have been nice to see a bit more from uh, from from Hammerlinen. But I thought Urhonisila, you know, we were, I was I was we we talked about it after the Ukraine game, which is sort of why wouldn't you bring on Valakari or Taylor? Um, and the thing that I noticed about Nisila today is that he's got an engine on him. You know, he he kept running for ninety minutes. Mm. You know, really, like just really was covering a lot of ground. Yeah, well, not 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 just running within a small area, but but like you say, side to side, backwards and forwards as well. That's true. That's true. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's uh, in this when when you play that sort of four three one two, it means you're narrow and you you're, in a sense you go up and down the pitch. And, and Nisila covered a ton of ground both defensively to get back and cover because being a part of that three is massively important but then offensively to build the play and then even when he's covered the ground he's picking up the ball he's taking soft deft touches and then moving it along and around i thought he was really 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 nice today i think he had there was one chance which was like 60 odd minutes i think when uh it, frederick jensen hit a shot and the keeper parried it and then it, and then it was about six passes of like everybody was in a was in a place to shoot Jensen passed to Lud, Lud passed to Nisila, Nisila tried to pass to Puki, Puki couldn't get it out of his feet, knocked it back to Nisila, knocked it back to Lerd. something like that, and it, like, it just pinged around the, the um, Kazakhstan box, and you're just screaming, shoot, somebody yeah. shoot, like it really should have been like, uh, and it's, it's a bit, I think I think they were trying, they might have been trying to, or Nisila in particular might have been trying to get Puki his, his hat-trick, which is commendable, but also, you know, it would have been nice if this game had been sort of four, three or four or five. You know what I mean? I think we I think we've, we made enough chances for it to be that. I haven't seen the statistics, but I think at half time or even during the first half, so at some stage it came, the stat came up that Finland had, had 12 chances and Kazakhstan had, had one. And I think it was in the first half because I was thinking at the time, well, how many of those have been on target? And I'd still like to know how many of those were on target. Um, but it could easily have been 5-0 when you look at the, the chances that were missed and saved and um and offside and all of all of those sort of combined it could easily have been five and no one would have complained. Yeah I, I think so. I mean at least you know Grandlands in the first half you should have had you could you could count I think there was a Pookie had another chance before his uh, offside goal was yeah. ruled out. Yeah. Uh, Jensen at the end was through one on one with a keeper and smashed it yes. twice. Oh, that was insane. Um, like the, and then Nisila was, you know, well placed, decided to tee up um, Puki instead of hitting it himself. I think there was, there was, yeah, three or four places where you think a best, slightly better decision, and um, it's just happened, or it's a, it's a relatively easy finish. And that Jensen chance at the end, that must have been like the fourth opportunity for Finland, including Puki's <laughs> first goal, where where Lod just like gently tipped the ball over him. and. <laughs> he loved he loved that that was yeah. his, that was his, like move of the day the dink the dink through pass he had his sandwich Just, boots with him today he did yeah <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, I mean, he, he must have just clocked the defenders early and then just thought, well, I'll just keep just keep lifting it over. These yeah. guys can't jump. So, so uh, the, the, there's definitely a different tone to this podcast than the one the other day, wasn't there? What, what, we're now Finland are on eight points, uh, six games played, so obviously two more. Two more to play away to Bosnia Herzegovina, and then home to France in November. Um, it, it also depends on what Ukraine do as well. If if we lose to Bosnia, then that we're a bit knackered anyway, and and it tightens everything up in the middle of the table. No, but I if think we so win, it's, it's it's quite easy tonight. Uh, so in about two hours from now, there is the Ukraine Bosnia Herzegovina game. Ah, yeah, okay, good point. If Ukraine beat Bosnia. We're done. There's, there's, yeah. there's, I mean, we'd need a miracle, right, right, for us to, to get to get further. Um, if Bosnia win or if it's a draw, we're then back into tight territory. Then we have to beat Bosnia, and then we go into the last round against France, 
needing to just beat the average. So needing to beat the, the other results of the group. It would be better uh, if they just didn't play each other and both got no points. That would do us a favour, wouldn't it? I mean, if that was if that, if that was somehow mathematically possible, <laughs> yes. I mean, can they go into administration? I don't you know, like a <laughs> county ask. Get points <laughs> deduction <laughs> before points November. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Agree. No, but I think it's um, no, but I think that's it. If if Ukraine win, Ukraine will take that. They're going to go into that um, that playoff spot. But if Bosnia win, we've got a chance because we play them, and then we need that last game between Ukraine and Bosnia to be a draw. Well, I think whichever way it comes. Uh, or is that the game that's today? You said Ukraine and Bosnia today. Yeah, there's two more of those. So they oh, they're playing each not, other twice still. Yeah, they've not played each other. Ah, yet. okay. Yeah, that's the decide. So it would be ideal if they could draw both of those, and then we can beat Bosnia, and then there's that chance. Eight, eight. Yeah, if they if they draw both of those and we beat Bosnia, and lose to France, I think we still go through. Yes, right? yes, it would be. So yeah, on 10, it would. On 11, they'll go on ten. Yes, so we'll make exactly. So yeah, if they if they draw both of those, yes. And then well, and, and then in two hours' time, after all this speculation, before we've even published, you're 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 to apply, exactly. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's fun to it's fun to play play with the numbers. But I, I no, think that's that's technically true. Yeah, but we yeah we just need then we only need one win from the last two games. Uh, but but I mean you know stranger things have happened but I, I still think yeah it's it's a lot I mean that's two you're you're hoping for two exact scores or exact results yeah exactly no let's let's take it game by game and see what see what happens but at least it, it feels like we're going into the game or into the final two games right in the thick of it there's you know there's there's, there's something to play for and that's always that's always good. As it stands, what is it? Bosnia on seven points, we're on eight. Uh, uh, Bosnia on, eight. on six, fourth place with six. We're in third with eight. Ukraine is second with eight. Only one goal better than Finland. And France at the yeah. top on 12. There you go. There you go. If we win the next two games, we have 14 points. We'll win the group. Anything possible. France to the playoffs. No, I think we're getting yeah. carried away with ourselves. We're, we're delirious. I think this is this is. I think you've got it. I think. I mean, we just we're coming back from Kazakhstan. Uh, yeah, that's right. Actually, I should say a Kazakhstan carrying a fair amount of injuries into this yeah. game. It's not, it's not like an A Kazakhstan. All right. Okay. Let's 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 just all calm down, yeah. gather our thoughts, and we'll um, we'll be back uh, with in the Finnish football show in a couple of weeks' time. I think there's the women's uh, World Cup qualifiers. Yes. Um, so we're going to do something then. Myself and Keke have already recorded an interview with Tinni Korpela, the uh, national team goalkeeper. So Keke's continued his run of interviewing Finland goalkeepers, which is which is great. We've got that in the can, and we're going to bring that out in a in a week or two, and then do some do something around the uh, around the women's games as well. So we'll be we'll be back in a couple of weeks' time. Um, Remember to uh, subscribe wherever you're watching or listening um, and to find us on social media, on, on Facebook, on Instagram, on the YouTube channel, um, or to follow us. I'm at Explore Finland on Twitter and Mark. At FC Swarmy. Perfect. And until the next episode, thanks for listening. Goodbye. What up?